Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Bronze Age Minecraft, a series where we set out to recreate the Bronze Age settlements of ancient Greece. My name is Daskalos, and I'm a professional archaeologist and certified interpretive guide. Last episode, we built up the walls of the second story of the palatial complex and filled about half of the rooms. In this episode, we are going to fill up the rest of the rooms, put a roof on it, and if we have enough time, we'll get to the village. Now, just a friendly reminder, the entirety of the second story of the palatial complex is complete and total conjecture. Basically, I'm just making it up as I go along. Now, we do have some evidence for some of the rooms in the second story. Well, possible evidence, I should say. But generally speaking, this is all just me doing this. So please, don't take any of this as historical fact. Now, with that out of the way... Well... Do you mind? I'm doing my intro. Jeez. All right, let's start doing stuff. Now, last episode, I talked about how the Linear B tablets talked of taxation and how we can infer how the lands of Pylos were administered. But what about the palace itself? What about the palace can we learn from the tablets and the contents of the rooms themselves? Though tax records may tell us where things are coming from, they also tell us what things are coming in. Now there's plenty of records that talk of wine, oil, wheat, and animals, but there's also records of donations and sacrifices to gods. All of these things are coming to the palace, and based on the sheer number of pantries full of drinking vessels, dinnerware, and oil and wine magazines, it's a fair bet to assume that Pylos was a place of feasting. All right, the rooms are done and filled, so let's get a roof on this thing. Like, you know, the whole thing, not just this section. All of it. Unsurprisingly enough, Homer also refers to feasting happening at Pylos. Now I know I've mentioned it before, but in the Odyssey, Homer describes Nestor sacrificing to Poseidon on the beach, and in the Linear B tablets, we see feasting and sacrificing in honor of Poseidon as well. But why feasting? What was so important about feasting, and why at the palace?
Way back in the early episodes of this series, I mentioned that Greece was a hard place to farm. Not only was about 70% of the land unusable for farming, but what little farmland was there was always at the risk of being lost to the next drought or blight. So put yourself in a king's shoes, or rather sandals, and think about what you could do to ensure your population is happy and well fed. I absolutely hated this roof, so I tore it down and rebuilt it. But to save some time, here's what it looked like when I was done. See? Much better. A lot more elevation, a little bit more dynamic, just all around a better looking roof. So let's do the other half. With such a broad reach that Pylos had, it can be reasonably assumed that someone, somewhere within the administered lands, would have excess in their harvest. Even if they didn't have an abundance of excess, there's a good chance that everyone could pitch in a little bit. This little bit would add up, and you could redistribute it to people who had had a bad harvest year. We see this kind of redistribution everywhere across the entire globe. The best way to ensure that people get their fair share, of course, is to have some sort of rules and or regulations in place and administer them from a centralized place of power. Sound familiar? Holding feasts in the gods' honor also checks off a few more boxes. The first is that it ensures your immediate and sometimes not so immediate population gets a solid meal. It also shows your population that you, the person in power, is the one ensuring that they got a proper meal. And finally, it curries favor in both the eyes of the gods and your subjects. With feasts, you not only ensure that your population is fed, but you also establish your place as a ruler amongst them. With these feasts serving to ensure a happy and strong population, it's no surprise that an archaeologist named Killen has suggested that feasting like this held together the fabric of society. And if that's true, well then Pylos with its insane amount of feastware held more than its fair share of societal fabric together.
So I know we zipped through those time lapses and I shoved a ton of information at you, but that's because I wanted to save a bunch of time at the end of this episode for some glamour shots. And why? Well, the palace is done. That's right. The only thing left to do is build a small village for the villagers and Pylos is done. So without taking up any more of your time, let's do a quick walkthrough of this half of the second story. And now, I present to you the palatial complex at Pylos. <laughs> <laughs> 